I'll refer to this Quartz Islander ISL 101 watch as the Cooney, which I've named after Kunal, president of Fine Time Solutions USA, the maker of the Cooney's movement. I'll refer to Fine Time Solutions as FTS. I'll refer to Long Island Watch as LIW. I bought the Cooney used on eBay. The Cooney is currently selling for $279. The Cooney uses the FTS caliber 7122 quartz movement. I couldn't find any information in FTS's specs page or their casing specs page about whether the Cal 7122 has a vitally important feature of quartz movements called an end of life indicator feature, which warns the user when the battery is running out of juice so that one does not have to experience the dread and anxiety associated with sudden battery death. I emailed FTS with this question. It wasn't a surprise to me that FTS didn't get back to me, as their Spartan specifications page, their stupid patriotic advertising, and the fact that Kunal, the president of FTS, looks like a homeless guy, strongly suggested to me that FTS is a Mickey Mouse outfit. Look at how Kunal's underwear is riding high, as if Mark, the president of LIW, seen here staring at Kunal, had just given Kunal a wedgie. Mark should be more respectful of the homeless. The Cal 7122's battery life is hidden away in the casing specs. Strangely, the battery life is not stated as expected battery life, but theoretical battery life. Theory is the realm of academic researchers, not mechanical engineers who deal in quantifiable measurements. If FTS meant expected battery life, then four years is the minimally accepted battery life for a $279 quartz watch. If the Cal 7122 doesn't have an end of life indicator, which I suspect, as FTS has not documented this in a clear way and has ignored my question as to whether it has one, then the Cal 7122 is a completely unacceptable movement at the Cooney's price point. At the $279 price point, I expect a quartz watch to either have an end-of-life indicator or have a solar quartz movement. All solar quartz movements have the equivalent of an end-of-life indicator called a low-power indicator. Let's look now at how the Cal 7122 movement performs. Notice the second hand jump back when I pull out the crown. This wacky quartz behavior brought back sentimental memories of the halcyon, carefree years of the 1970s when we were too stupid to know that early era quartz watches and polyester clothing were complete junk. Notice how when I push the crown back in, I have to wait about a second for the second hand to start up again. I don't even remember early quartz watches behaving this absurdly. One of the big advantages of quartz is accuracy. With the FTS Cal 7122, the act of setting the watch might cost you some accuracy. The Cal 7122 movement loses 20 seconds on average per month. Compare this to the 12-year-old solar quartz movement in the Seiko SNE 585 that I last reviewed. I purchased the SNE 585 new on eBay for $4 less than that of the Cooney's retail price. I don't want to make a big production about the slightly less accurate Cal 7122. It's not a huge deal. What is a huge deal is the Cal 7122's lack of an end-of-life indicator. The Seiko SNE 585 doesn't do a stellar job hitting the markers, but it is at least trying. The FTS Cal 7122 isn't even making an attempt at hitting the markers. FTS's webpage has American flag wallpaper, and they describe how FTS is empowering the United States. Kunal's crappy movement doesn't make me feel empowered. I feel extremely disempowered when a quartz movement dies on me without warning. Also, Canal seriously needs to remove that dumb no cameras allowed sticker off his window. Nobody on earth wants to conduct industrial espionage to steal his 70-year-old quartz movement technology. 
I give the Cooney's movement an F. In LIW's description of the Cooney, you'll see the text built in the USA and assembled in the USA repeatedly. I don't see any evidence that FTS is a union shop or has a workforce of wounded veterans. So why should I give a flying fug if the Cooney is built in the USA? The Cooney not only doesn't work right, but can't even begin to compete with Japanese or Swiss courts. Now that I've covered one giant elephant in the room, the Cooney's movement, I want to cover a smaller, yet still very relevant elephant, the Cooney's case. The Cooney's case thickness is 13.5 millimeters, like its cousin, the Islander Seiko SKX knockoff, which houses an entry-level automatic movement. 13.5 millimeters is on the cusp of being thick for a case designed for an entry-level automatic movement. Notice how the Solar Seiko 5A5 has an appropriately sized thickness of 11.5 millimeters for a solar quartz movement. Quartz movements are thinner. This is one of the advantages of quartz. It allows the consumer to wear a thinner watch. And keep in mind that the Seiko Solar Movement has a lot more technology packed into it than FTS's Cal 7122 Movement. I know Mark, owner of LIW, wears two watches and looks like a lovable human-sized Muppet. But Mark lazily shoving a quartz movement into a case designed for a thick automatic movement and then charging $279 for it is the equivalent of Mark pissing on his extremely loyal and devoted fans. Mark knows very well that he's screwing you, and he thinks he can get away with it because of the myth of Mark. Another big issue with the case is that it is a complete abomination. The left side of the case looks like my Seiko SKX knockoff. Mark moved the 4 o'clock crown of the Seiko SKX design to the 3 o'clock position. Mark's grotesque deformation of the classic SKX design is a sacrilegious affront to the watch gods. The Cooney's diameter is 42 millimeters. The case width, including the crown, is 45 and a half millimeters. The shift in position from the XKX's 4 o'clock crown to the 3 o'clock position not only looks bad, but was a retrograde design decision as it creates more crown poke for my roughly 7-inch wrist and makes the watch wear considerably wider. The degree to which the lightly etched text and big-ass flag in the case back is off from the angle it should be at, 180 degrees, is really Mickey Mouse. When I first saw the Cooney's case back, I thought that the guy who sold it to me might have tampered with the case back. Either that or it was a factory defect. After seeing Mark's video of his tour of the FTS factory, it became clear to me that they were deliberately making the case backs this way. Many case bags have circular writing around their edges and a centered image, so you can get away with an unlevel image at the center of a watch, such as this case back. The Cooney's flag image, however, is positioned near the bottom and sandwiched by a huge amount of horizontal text. This is not only jarring and ugly, but creates the impression that the case back isn't screwed in properly. This is the first time I've ever deducted a point for a bad case back. Is the unlevel flag on the case back supposed to make one proud of buying American or being American? I'm not sure. If I absolutely had to wear a Cooney and someone asked me where the watch was made, I'd be too ashamed to tell them it was made in the USA. I blame it on one of the evil countries for making the Cooney, like North Korea or California. The finish of the case is fine. I like how the logo on the crown was implemented. This is a big improvement over Mark's past attempt. The screw down crown is fine. I had no trouble finding the detents. I give the Cooney's case one of the easiest Fs I've ever given. The Cooney's bracelet is 22 millimeters in width. It tapers down to 18 millimeters. This is a good amount of taper. The bracelet fluidity is relatively good. The bracelet's links are connected with screw pins, which I'm a huge fan of. Mark even gives you a screwdriver that he smushes into his undersized watch box with his smushed up one-year warranty card. 
case integration with the bracelet is acceptable. I wish it had female end links like the replacement clasp I put on my SKX knockoff, as the female end links don't increase the effective length of the watch. These big ass male end links on the Cooney make the Cooney feel longer than it is. The Cooney's technical length or lug to lug is 46 millimeters. This is really good and one of the reasons why my SKX knockoff wears so well. The Cooney's effective length, however, because of the male end links, is 52 millimeters. This and the added width of its 3 o'clock crown caused the Cooney to not wear terribly well on my average sized wrist. The end links behind the case aren't flush with the case back. This isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it looks like a kludge and adds to the hack Mickey Mouse vibe of the Cooney. I was the first person to review Mark's very first Islander, and I've been bitching and moaning about Mark's sharp as cheap as poop class for years. I'm no longer going to complain about it. Instead, I'm going to show you a video of my cutting a tough, well done piece of pork loin with it. And I'm going to do this every time I encounter a sharp ass poop clasp like this. Notice how the clasp slices into the tough meat like butter. If it can do this to a tough piece of meat, imagine what this street legal weapon could do to your wife and kids when you brush up against them with this clasp. Mark is one of the last watchmakers to use this poop type of clasp. He should stop selling them, and for God's sakes, you should stop buying them. If Mark were really a nice guy, he wouldn't be aiding and abetting the accidental slicing up of your loved ones with this cheap-ass clasp. Mark, like Steel Dive, subscribes to the Forrest Gump box of chocolate philosophy of watch production, as you never know what you're going to get with Mark's watches. My SKX knockoff bezel is slightly too loose. This is my third Islander SKX knockoff. Each of them has had a completely different bezel resistance and feel. The Cooney's bezel is way too tight. The Cooney's ceramic bezel insert looks good and complements the dial background nicely. I give the bezel SC-. The Cooney's dial design is a knockoff of the Seiko SKX 173. I'm not exempting Mark from any issues the Cooney's dial inherited from the intellectual procurement of the XKX-173. At a glance, the dial looks pretty nice, but when you look closer, it looks a little cheap. The Sunray dial is very nicely done. I'm always afraid when buying watches with Sunray dials because they're often way too loud. Not this one. The chapter ring is nicely done and shines nicely in light. This is a really nice touch. I'm knocking off a point for the overcrowded area at the top of the dial. The day date is more difficult to read than it should be. I'm knocking off a point for the lack of a margin in the date window. I'm knocking off a point for the day date's too narrow font. I'm knocking off an additional point for the tacky plastic looking handset. I give the dial a B minus. This dial could have been a very easy A if LIW had not made watches like McDonald's makes hamburgers. I live above the 45th parallel and it's winter, so I can't do adequate glare testing. I, however, would be very surprised if the Cooney had problems with glare. It has anti-reflective coating. The crystal has a slight blue tint. Unlike my SKX knockoff, the edge of the Cooney's crystal has a small amount of distortion. I think the crystal is pretty nice. I give it an A. The Cooney has an abundance of loom on its bezel and markers, yet none of loom on the most important part, its hands. The Cooney barely squeaked out a pass in my three-hour loom test. Its hands were blurry and running on fumes at the three-hour point. The loom on my SKX knockoff's hands were dominating the Cooney. The Cooney is not ISL rated. You can see in Mark's factory tour of FTS that they have what appears to be substantial pressure testing equipment. After seeing that, I'm confident that the Cooney will be watertight. The Cooney doesn't seem like a real watch to me. The Cooney is like the leftover meat that a restaurant didn't sell the week before and was hastily thrown into a fish stew as a Monday special. The Cooney is probably a half decent value at $100. At $279, it's a royal screwing of the consumer.
Despite the main issue in my Seiko 585, its wobbly stem, I think the Seiko 585 as a whole is a vastly better watch than the Kuni. The Kuni isn't even in the same league as the Seiko 585. Mark could have designed a real quartz watch from the ground up, like some of his microbrand competitors, who are putting quality Epson off-the-shelf solar movements into their watches. Mark chose the easy way, the sloppy way. He poorly retrofit his SKR knockoff so that he wouldn't need to deal with new parts and extensive R&D. He put in a garbage quartz movement and packaged the resulting overpriced obscenity of a watch in the American flag in the hope that he might appeal to those blinded by patriotic fervor. Look at the ridiculous full name that Mark chose for the Cooney. Islander USA Assembled AmeriCorps Dive Watch. He thinks you're a bunch of goddamn morons. I give the Cooney an overall grade of D. Another issue with the Cooney that potential buyers should be aware of is its poor resale value. Notice how the Cooney compares to the Islander Bayport watch in these recently ended sales on eBay. There were 36 bids on this Cooney, which is a healthy amount of bidding. Surprisingly, the watch sold for only $79, only 28% of its original value. There were 30 bids for the Islander Bayport, still a healthy amount of bidding. It sold for $226 if you include the shipping cost. This is a really impressive 70% of the Bayport's original value. I'm not going to do this because it would be violating YouTube's terms of service. But if I enlarged Kunal's crotch much further, you'd see some hairy ball sticking out of Kunal's thread-worn pants and yellow-stained underwear. I've made my feelings known about Kunal's crappy quartz. But I, as a human being, have compassion for Kunal and his plight as a homeless man. Accordingly, I'm setting up a GoFundMe page on behalf of Kunal in an effort to rescue him from homelessness. I encourage people to donate to him generously. Watch Lab is approaching 3,000 subscribers. I'll be doing a 3K Crappy Crown giveaway show where I will be giving away my Seiko SNE 585 to one lucky subscriber who lives in either the U.S. or Canada. I'll also give away another crappy Islander watch that I haven't yet reviewed if I'm able to review it in time. There will also be a 3K virtual beer bash party and fundraiser where I will go live and drink beer and beg you for money. There will be more information about these events later. I wish getting 3K subscribers were truly something to celebrate, but it isn't. I'm acquiring subscribers at a snail's pace. At my current rate of subscriber growth, it'll take a good three more months to get to 3K, which is pretty sad considering how many videos I've made and how revolutionary my content has been. There's some evidence of an increase in returning viewers, which is the only dim light that I can see which might lead us out of the darkness so that I might spread my gospel to the watch review world of not accepting bribes. Also, I want as many people as possible to be able to access my fair and honest watch reviews. I would also like to feature in my watch reviews beautiful women caressing my silky smooth womanly cheeks, but that's going to take a while. When I reach 3K, I will reassess whether it makes any sense for me to continue to bear the economic pain of buying watches in order to further my goal of acquiring a sustainable audience. I make no guarantees about being able to continue after the 3K milestone has been reached. My stockpile of unreviewed watches is already enough to get me to 3K, and I still plan to make one or two more acquisitions of popular watches. I ask that you contribute to my Save the Watch Lab GoFundMe page. I joke around a lot, but this is a real GoFundMe page. If you'd rather make a direct donation via the YouTube Thanks button or PayPal, then please do so. Your donations will help me to ease the pain of paying off my credit card bill. Even more important, it will be a great boost to my morale. 
If you have current model watches that you think might be of interest to me, please contact me about lending them to me for review. I'll pay for round trip shipping and insurance. I'll also size the watches for you if you need sizing. Please like, please subscribe, and please save the watch lab.